Hello and welcome back to another episode of Colour With Me, where I, the Black Gallerina, talk about decolonial theory, curatorial practice and contemporary art galleries while colouring away. In this video, I'll be reading out eight testimonies from the recently released Barbican Stories book. Barbican Stories is a collection of first-hand and witnessed accounts of discrimination at the Barbican Centre, written anonymously by current and former employees. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I normally use alcohol markers, but for this video, I've decided to use paint because I haven't painted since I was about 16, and I thought that this was a great time to practice. Normally, I would have provided a little explanation about what I'm about to draw, but for this video, I have decided to explain the picture at the end. With all that said, let's get colouring. Before I start reading out the testimonies, I wanted to provide a content warning for discussion about racism and for racist language. The Barbican book itself is over 100 pages long, so I've selected a handful of testimonies and grouped some together with certain themes. The first few testimonies are about the Basquiat exhibition, which is actually the last exhibition I went to at the Barbican, and I thought that it was a bit of an odd experience because I felt that the exhibition was more of a storytelling about how Basquiat was found by Andy Warhol and I thought that it depoliticised Basquiat and his work a bit and that's something that I heard from other black people who also visited the exhibition. And some of these feelings are picked up in a few of these testimonies. Number one, overheard at the Basquiat exhibition. Andy Warhol taught Basquiat, right? If it wasn't for Andy Warhol, Basquiat wouldn't have reached the goal he reached, right? Number two, at the Basquiat Boom For Real private view. A VIP guest tried to cut the cloakroom queue. I responded by telling him to join the back of the queue and told him that we would help him in due time. This visibly frustrated him. It was busy and a lot of people needed to check in their bags too. When he got to the front of the queue, he turned to me and said, if you have kids, I hope they drown. I wasn't even the person who had initially taken his bag or interacted with him, but I was the only black person in the cloakroom. The people that stand out are the ones that are targeted. Number three, during members' tours of the basket, being for real, I noticed that when the tour guides went through the arts work about police brutality, they would cut that bit short. A few of the tours were led by black people. Number four, I've done three separate internships with the same team at the Barbican because they had no budget to hire me as an assistant but wanted to keep working with me. Eventually, I was employed as an assistant in the adjacent team. Recently, a white assistant was employed with no prior experience in the job. This made me feel weird, but I wasn't able to articulate why until now. It is important to use entry-level employment as a development staff training opportunity but I cannot help but wonder why it is that the opportunities is afforded to some and not others. Number five, a young black girl around the age of 14, 15 comes into the department to spend a week here during work experience. I'm asked to take her for lunch and share my experience of working in the arts with her. When we sit down to eat, she asks me, do you think I will be able to work in the arts as none of the staff here look like me? I feel mortified, but also see myself in her as I also have the same concerns for myself. I reassure her, but deep down I am heartbroken. I did not expect to perform such emotional labour at work when I woke up that day. I didn't tell anyone except for my line manager, who is also a person of colour. We are both so devastated. Number six. One day, a member of senior management came into the office to speak to a colleague. We all started talking about a conference and the different attendees. All of a sudden, the person looked at me and said, you're yellow. After a comfortable silence, they qualified this by defining yellow as the color of my aura. The thing is, I'm Asian. Number seven. During my time at the Barbican, one of my tasks was to research an artist we were going to be exhibiting, and I saw that quickly, this artist was sus. The artist called herself a magpie, like a cultural magpie. But I was like, baby, that's a vulture. It's not a magpie. I saw that she had previously done these really awful sculptures of black people and they were really grotesque in the way that she had represented them. 
Usually, a lot of her figures are quite androgynous and quite culturally ambiguous, whereas these ones were not. They had enlarged breasts, enlarged bums, stretched lips or ears. They were wearing gold ch chains in which seemed like shackles on them. It looked like some sort of modern day gollywog. The sculptures were sitting on the floor on Persian rugs and alongside that were paintings of monkeys. I read the artist's book on the exhibition and there were no mention of what and why this was the way it was. I spoke to our curator and this was when I was quite new and didn't know how to really navigate these types of things but I also couldn't bite my tongue. The curator said, yeah, we're not going to bring that up. I chose that last one because I really can relate to that situation. I know other people of colour who have worked in galleries that have had a similar experience where an artist was clearly has some racist undertones within their work or just had racist work. Number eight. In day-to-day -day operations, POC ambassadors are sent to community centres across our partner boroughs and when a relationship has been built, white colleagues take over and we are no longer allowed to retain contact. POC are used as pawns. Oh, look at us, we're so inclusive. POC ambassadors are almost always a nice progression in careers. Even a sideways move is significantly more difficult. I thought that uh, testimony was interesting because I read um, an article in Art Professional that um, racism and anti-racism with the, the arts and it also discussed how normally people of colour are pushed into like community roles and not able to like sort of progress in other areas and I'll link that article in the description box of this video. In response to the publishing of the book, the Barbican has released the following statement. The Barbican has been made aware of these allegations of racist behaviour towards some of the members of our current and former staff. The Barbican has always strived to be an inclusive, welcoming and open organisation. We are shocked and saddened to hear about these allegations and will immediately launch an independent review into them. Although we have not received formal complaints, all staff will be able to contribute to the independent review so that their experiences can be heard and those impacted can get the support they need. We want everyone's voice to be listened to and respected. We fully recognise the pain and hurt caused by the experiences. We are committed to pursuing the ongoing programme of action which we have laid out to advance anti-racism in the organisation and to achieve necessary change. While the Barbican are allegedly shocked to hear these allegations, these experiences do not surprise many people of colour working in the arts. I would like to thank all the people behind Barbican Stories who gave me permission to use the book for this video and to thank all the people who played a role in getting it published because I know it's very rare that the public gets to see and learn about the institutional racism that happens behind the scenes of some of their favourite exhibitions in their favourite galleries. So finally, if you were interested in what I was painting, this was an image that was inspired by a PC game that I used to play when I was a kid called All The Draw A Story. It was one of my favourite games as a child because it centred a young black girl, she was Jamaican. Her name's Orly and she lets you make stories and illustrate the characters and the scenes with her as the stories progressed. I wanted to colour this image because I felt like it shared that same vibe of finding power and claiming your own actors and paint your own pictures. For materials, I actually used Bree's watercolour paint for the image because um, I had them laying around and I didn't read the label, so I just thought this is paint. But I do actually have some gouache paint in a box somewhere, which I will use in my next painting video. As always, you can find more information about all these materials in the description box of this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. 
Plus, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you for watching. Take care and see you soon.